Hi students, welcome again to my channel. This is Teacher Eman and now we're going to discuss the Unit 3 for Global Networks and Labor and Migration. This is for Trends, Networks, and Critical Thinking in the 21st Century. This is for Senior High School. Okay, so if you're new to my channel, please like and also subscribe and then hit the notification bell. And by the way, um, the topics that I'm discussing for trends is based from the curriculum, uh, the curriculum guide uh, given by the dep, uh, from the DepEd. So kung may mga changes man from your teacher, um, ano na yon, para addition niya na yon ng teacher niya for the subject. So now let's go for us for our subject for this is for uh, unit 3 of our trans networks okay so we're going to go with labor and migration under global networks okay so the first uh, idea that we're going to discuss is about globalization so globalization is defined as the most powerful force for change in the world today affecting all societies in the planet it entails the movement of capital a free flow of goods and services, the increased mobility of individuals, and the expansion of multinational corporations and transnational organization. Globalization has integrated the products and financial markets of economies around the world through the driving forces of trade and capital flows across borders. As you can see, um, ang bansa natin is part of the globalization process ng buong mundo. Kaya nga siguro kayo nagkaroon ng K-12, unlike before na hindi K-12 ang education na aming dinaanan, pero ngayon kayong mga sudyante under na kayong K-12 because this is part of the globalization. Para kasi gusto na mangyari, kayong mga sudyante ngayon, pag graduate kayo, uh, pwede tayong pumantay sa mga sudyante ng graduate ibang mga bansa, especially yung mga nasa US, ganyan. Kasi nangyayari katod sa mga time namin, pag graduate kami dito ng college, pag pumunta kami sa US, like for example, me, I'm also a nurse. So dahil graduate ako ng nurse, board passer ako. Pag lumipat ako sa US at magtatrabaho ako doon bilang nurse, hindi nila tinatanggap dahil kulang daw ang education na nakuha ako dito sa Pilipinas. That's why ngayon, dinagdagan kayo ng additional 2 years in high school kaya meron ng grade 11 and grade 12 which is before 1st and 2nd year. Kasi ngayon, because of globalization, dinagdagan na another 2 years sa pag-aaral natin. Okay, one of the goals of globalization is for the world to become more interdependent. Hindi siya depend independent ha? kasi pag independent, uh, kaya mo tumayo sa sarili mo. But here in globalization, we are interdependent. Ibig sabihin, umaasa din tayo sa isa't isa. Hindi lang sa isang bansa, kundi sa maraming bansa. Which is again, ginagawa natin, tulungan ng mga bansa. So, people and countries of the world are closely woven together, especially in the economic aspect. It aims to standardize income distribution through its economic integration schemes. Okay, now punta na tayo sa migration. Migration is the movement of people from one territory to another for the purpose of taking up either a permanent or a temporary residence. Kasi nga, um, because maraming factors or reason kung bakit ang mga tao na nag-aalis nag sa sarili ng bansa. Kaya nga dito sa Pilipinas, di ba? Bata pa lang yung mga tao, mga sudyante, iniisip na nila, ay mag magtatrabaho ko sa ibang bansa kasi mas maganda nga naman doon or mas malaki ang sawa doon. So this is one, ano, one reason of migration. So yung iba, uh, gusto na talagang tumira permanently sa ibang bansa. Iba naman temporary, they just want to work. Tapos kapag may bakasyon, uwi sila sa Pilipinas. Migration is said to be old, as old as human civilization. And there is a clear proof that globalization is inextricably related to it. So, making na lamang globalization. The growing demand for laborers of the most capitalist countries precipitated the migration of many families from the unprivileged communities. Kahit nga siguro sa Pilipinas, eh, di ba? Mas ang daming mga gustong pumunta from provinces to Manila or Metro Manila kasi nakikita nila na mas maganda ang magiging opportunity nila pagdating sa pag-aaral or pagtatrabaho kasi dito sa Pilipinas kasi meron tayong tinatawag na ano eh, uh, provincial rate at saka Manila rate so pag Manila or city rate mas malaki compared sa provincial rate kaya makaramihan ng mga 
natatrabaho sa mga probinsya, mas gusto nilang pumunta sa syudad kasi mas malaki nga naman ang sahod. That's what we call the opportunity na makukuha natin doon. Okay, so according to the estimates, more or less than 20% of the labor force in the Philippines wants to leave the country in search for a job abroad. Some of them become victims of illegal recruitment and also human trafficking. Kaya kung kayo gusto niyo pumunta sa ibang bansa, make sure na yung pupunta niyo mga agency is legitimate at hindi kayo maluloko kasi marami ng mga Pilipino na naloko dahil dito. People migrate for various reasons or different reasons. So the reasons may fall under these categories. It could be environmental, it could be political, it could be cultural or economic. Uh, with these categories, National Geographic categorized them as push and pull factors of immigration. Push factors are those that motivate the people to move from one place to another because of difficulties such as food shortage, war, flood, and etc. Pull factors are those that motivate people to move their place to another simply because of some desirable reasons such as nicer climate, better food supply, freedom and others. So, pag, pinagka, pag titin natin pagkakaiba nila, pag push, ibig sabihin tinutulak ka paalis. So, kapag pangit ang lugar mo, pangit ang tinitirahan mo, parang natutulak ka na umalis ka na lang at mag-migrate. Ang pull factor, factor naman is parang hinahata ka naman niya. So, kapag isang lugar na meron sila na wala ka parang nahata ka, For example, Korea, di ba? Pag nasa Korea ka, parang nakakata ka kasi ang ganda-ganda ng lugar nila, masarap ay mga pagkain. So, those are pull factors. Kung yung lugar mo, masyadong pangit, maraming basura, ganyan, maraming corrupt officials, it's a push factor kung bakit aalis ka, tiwanan mo yung bansa mo. Types of migration. So, we have internal migration, external migration, migration, immigration, and forced migration. Internal migration, this is defined as the process wherein migrants look for a new residence within their own country, state, or continent. External migration, moving in a different state, country, continent to a new residence. Migration, leaving one country to move to another country. Migration, moving into, another new, uh, into a new country. And then forced migration, this happens when the state or authorities force its people to migrate for a reason. Migration, globalization, and climate change. Natural calamities like earthquakes, tsunamis, typhoons, and floods have brought varying degrees of devastation around the world. The global consciousness that climate change may represent one of the most significant threats of the near future has stimulated humanity's collective interest in disaster. A. Kim Steiner, di ko sure kung tama spe, pronunciation ko, he is the Director General of the International Union of, for Conservation of Nature, believes that migration both forces or voluntary will be the most significant consequences of climate change and environmental degradation. Migration force or otherwise will undoubtedly be one of the most significant consequences of environmental degradation and climate change in decades to come. 250 million people are permanently displaced by climate change related phenomena such as floods, droughts, famines, and hurricanes. In the past 10 years alone, Asia had been hit by strong earthquakes, tsunamis, and typhoons that resulted to the loss of thousands of lives and left tens of thousands homeless and the anguish. Placelessness disintegrates individuals and communities, often with detrimental effects to self-identity and well-being. Global economic and environmental movement have observed that those climate Refugees are the people who migrate because of disaster and not by war or any conflict in their country. So that's it for Unit four, uh, Unit 3 of Trends. So if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also hit the notification bell. And also please like this video. And I'll see you again on my next lecture.